Hello, I'm Pastor Mike Decker. I'm super glad that you're tuning in. Are you eager to encounter God today? Good. Me too. As we start, if you haven't yet, I encourage you to download our app found at hellopastormike.com. We put together some great resources for you to enjoy. In fact, there's even a place for you to connect with me, and I would love to hear from you. So please use the app, share it with your family and friends, because together we are stronger. Hello and welcome to today's meditation moment. As we begin, I invite you to take a deep breath with me. Inhale. Hold it. Now exhale. Good. One more time. Inhale, deep breath. Hold it. Now exhale. Good. Now whisper this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, please meet with me today. Heavenly Father, please heal me today. Good. Now as you focus on your breathing, as you relax and settle in, listen as I read one Bible verse taken from the book of 1 Peter Chapter 3. Don't repay evil for evil, we are told. Don't retaliate with insults when people insult you. Instead, pay them back with a blessing. That is what God has called you to do, and He will bless you for it. Friend, can you think of a time in your life when you were hurt? by someone and all you could think about was getting even and perhaps hurting that person back? You know, many of us are competitive by nature and so I submit that many of us have this natural wiring to compete with others. Consequently, I submit that the same wiring that causes a person to want to conquer another person or defeat another person is closely related to the desire to retaliate or to seek out revenge. But here's what the Bible teaches, and maybe you have observed this in your own life. Retaliation is often self-destructive. Revengeful desires ultimately hurt me. You know, Proverbs 26, verse 27 says that if a man digs a pit, he will fall into it. If a man rolls a stone, it will roll back on him. Translation, if I dig a hole with the hopes that my enemy falls into it, chances are strong that I will be the one who falls into that hole. If I devise a scheme that is intended to hurt someone else, chances are good that I will be the one who is hurt instead. My scheme will come back on me. You know what we call that, don't you? It's the boomerang effect. The boomerang effect. And you know what a boomerang is, don't you? Maybe you can picture that Australian toy or weapon in your mind. I throw it out, and what happens? It returns back to me. I throw it at someone, but it comes right back at me. Apparently, the same is true with revenge which might be the reason why God wants you and invites me to trust him to resolve the conflict and pain in our life story. That might be why God wants you and invites me to lean on him so that we can offer people generosity when all we want to do 
is give them a piece of our fist. Why? Because both revenge and generosity have a boomerang effect. Listen again to today's Bible verse. Don't repay evil for evil. Don't retaliate with insults when people insult you. Instead, pay them back with a blessing. That is what God has called you to do, and He will bless you for it. Notice that God doesn't say that He might bless you for it. Nor does He say that God will think about blessing you for it. Rather, what does the Bible promise? It says God will bless you for it. Would you like God to bless your life today, to pour out his favor upon you today? If so, I invite you to pray this prayer right now with me. Say, Heavenly Father, please help me to let go and lean on you. Please help me to hold a loose grip on retaliation. Good. I'll close with this. Years ago when I was a young pastor, first starting out in ministry, I would often have members from my church congregation visit me in my office. Educationally, I have a master's degree in counseling, and so on the church staff that I was a part of, I was the guy who people would come to see when they had a problem, when they were looking for someone to maybe guide them and help navigate them through their decisions of life. And so week after week, month after month, I would listen to people's stories. And as our conversation would conclude and that person would get up from their chair or from the couch in my office and walk out, usually feeling better as a result of our time together, as a young pastor, I quickly realized that with every conversation and with every burden that people shared with me, I recognized that I began to carry the weight of people's stuff. Their burdens became my burdens. Their dreams and hopes became my dreams and hopes. And all of this sounds rather innocent, but over time I began to recognize that I was becoming ineffective and unfruitful. Suddenly, I found myself being short when I got behind the the, the wheel of my car, getting angry at people or maybe frustrated with maybe just the simple things in life. And I realized that I was getting loaded down with what I call people's monkeys. People's monkeys. Now, I couldn't see these monkeys, but they were hanging all over me. And the weight of carrying people's stuff began to stifle and suffocate me. Well, it didn't take me long as a young pastor to recognize that I needed to change my rhythm and somehow learn to give people to God and let Him carry their pain. And so on the wall next to my desk, I wrote this question that I would look at every time someone who was about to walk into my office for counseling. And the question was this, have you taken your monkey with you? Have you taken your monkey with you? In my early days of pastoral ministry, while my Christian responsibility certainly involved me listening to people, you know, affirming and encouraging and supporting them, Life also taught me that God's shoulders are far bigger and stronger than my own. God taught me in those early years of ministry that he is a far better monkey carrier (laughs) than I could ever be. Friend, I encourage you to remember and celebrate today that God is in the monkey carrying business and he invites you and me 
to let him carry our burden. God invites you and me to let him settle the score. Friend, the Bible teaches that the desire for revenge is a dangerous monkey to carry. Let me say that again. The Bible teaches that the desire for revenge and retaliation is a dangerous monkey for us to carry. And it will, over time, smother you. In fact, the desire for revenge will destroy you. So here's my closing challenge. Will you leave your monkey with God? Will you give your monkey to God? Let's pray one final prayer together. Again, take a deep breath, inhale. Hold it. Now exhale. Now pray this. Heavenly Father, please carry my monkey. Heavenly Father, please carry my monkey. Don't repay evil for evil, we are told. Don't retaliate with insults when people insult you. Instead, pay them back with a blessing. That is what God has called you to do, and he will bless you for it. Friend, trust that God has something special for you today. Live with the confidence from knowing that God is at work in your life. And as you trust him with your monkey, he will pour out his favor upon you abundantly. Amen. Thanks so much for joining me today. I would love to hear from you. The easiest way is through our Palm Harvest app, which can be found at hellopastormike.com. Hellopastormike.com. There are a number of cool features on the app, like this meditation moment. And so I encourage you to download it, use it, and even share it with a friend. Because together, we are stronger. I'll see you soon.